Hello there and welcome to Genesis Models. Here today we have the Hellcat F6 F3 by Eddard. It's in 148th scale. Now this kit is a little bit old, so um, you know it's good fitting, great surface detail, but um, you know we do have a fair bit of flash when it comes to this kit, um, which is the only problem really. But you know if you kind of use a blade and you scrape it off and sand it off, it's not a big deal considering. Um, um, with this kit you do get a uh, photo etch with it so we can spice up that whole uh, cockpit area. So as you can see a lot of scraping going on there. Now we are going to put the fuel tank in this so we've just got to cut out this sort of little rectangular shape um, which you can cut quite easily. Um, I have also built this kit once before in an RAF um, camo pattern as you can see there so I know it's a, a good fitting kit. Now we're using some interior green here, using the Mr. Hobby range, they're a, um, acrylic uh, range. They do have these cool little tops by the way, just to make pouring a little bit easier into the colour cup. Uh, we're mixing about 50-50 and our PSI is around about 15 to 20, just whatever gives you a good, good spray pattern. Uh, which as you can see I'm starting just here. Going to jump straight in with some oils with this one, using some enamel thinners as well. We mix it together and we can make our own little bit of a filter, right? You've got to just get it nice and thin, just to that nice consistency where you just brush it on and it just kind of changes the hue a bit, just kind of gives us a bit better than just having a flat, flat uh, coat. As you can see there, it's not a major sort of bit of weathering with that. Now we're just going to do a little bit of painting here, doing where the dials would go, right? Um, just a bit of thinning down. Using the side of a brush and coming back to interior green, we can put some nice sharp edges in, right? Just to make painting a little bit easier. Coming in with some H11, just to paint in those dials. You could almost sort of, it's almost like a bit of a dry brush as well you can do with someone. Just brush it over and get lo loads of buttons done in one. If you water it down a lot more, you can just touch like um, dials and it just paints it for you. Now I'm going to um, gloss this over just to kind of protect the filter that we've put on. Now we're going to move along with the actual photo etch. I'm using a number 9 blade there and a cutting mat. And you want to rock, you don't want to like saw or drag, you know, rock as you cut it off the fret. Uh, I do recommend the Tamiya um, file for kind of getting rid of any leftover tabs. Really good, good tool for that job. And also keep on sandwiching the photo etch just to stop any bends from happening. Out with the micro crystal clear next, we're just going to water this down, right? So as we can have capillary action to suck in between our two pieces of photo etch here, just to glue them together. Uh, we can then get our brush and make it dry so we can suck up any sort of um, leftover bits that's on the surface. And that should all be nicely glued together. Always good to test fit as well before actually putting down and gluing down any bits of photo etch. Coming in with neat micro crystal clear now. Um, and we can just place that unknown that's going to fit nicely. Cotton wool buds, always going to be good to clean up any excess micro crystal clear that might have oozed out the sides. And there we have it, a really nice bit of instrument display panel using photo etch. Now we have the seat belts, which we want to make them look a little bit less sort of straight. So give them a couple of bends to make them look a bit more natural. Uh, we're going to use super glue to glue these down, right? We, we get the tip of it and we glue the tip in place first. So then we can just bend that over. And then I like to use a cotton, uh, sorry, a cocktail stick, which we get some soup glue on, and we just kind of rub it on the back of the seat belts. 
and then we just place that down hold it into position till it's glued some stormhouse silver here by um, citadel we're going to do some chipping you know good old bit of um, uh, sponge dab it down get it a bit sort of dry and we could just dab it where we would see general wear and tear now we're going to use some interior wash by ammo and we're just you can sort of target where there is raised and detailed areas or you can just slap it all on if you really want to same goes for uh, the cockpit area we can use some enamel odorless thinners just to clean up any sort of messy bits where we don't want it where it's gone where it hasn't and just kind of leaving it as i say in all those recessed raised and detailed areas uh, we've got some enamel uh, humbrels enamel dust here which can go on the black areas right because um, the first color we used doesn't kind of show up that well on any sort of black instrument display panel areas and um, with a damp cotton wool bud we can just clean up the areas we can come in with a brush as well and again it's just cleaning it all up so it just looks good in the washes where we want it to be don't forget to clean out those dials as well we don't want them to be too dirty we want them to be nice and glassy uh, some areas can be quite easy to clean up as well now we're coming in with just a bit of a pigment right we're just going to put it down um, in the sort of the bottom part of the cockpit area just to kind of you know dirty feet that kind of thing uh, just to kind of give that a bit more life as you can see then we come in with the matte coat just to mattify everything and bring everything together which you know the final bit is just to get um, the the actual dials with some go use the agents looking all nice and glassy right as you can see you could just like touch this and it literally kind of paints itself so you know you don't have to be too too careful and it just really sets off the cockpit when you get all that nice and shiny And there we have it all built we've got the first half glued in and there is our cockpit so we can begin uh, doing some building but actually before we put it together make sure you um, clean those glass parts right so using pegs f clamps right we get everything locked in position make sure there's no steps uh, make sure there's no gaps and we can just run some tammy extra thin cement down all those join lines now we do have these little pillars which do create a gap now the thing is it creates a gap but it's a gap we don't want to close in this case because it fits perfectly with that gap right also don't be tempted to close those gaps as well because that's where the horizontal stabilizers and stuff are going to fit in there and they fit perfectly with the gap so with the gap it fits perfectly which is kind of a bit um, of a different one there but we've just got to fill it in so plastic putty inject and wipe away while it's still wet right just to get it started get the gap going uh, but we're going to put more work into this so just going to mask this up now just so as we protect our surface detail and keep the, the filler where we want it to be which we're going to use green putty by the way um, which we just kind of just get it out of the tub uh, with a spatula and just start laying it down kind of try and work it into the gap and run that all the way along then we can just sand this all away um, I'm using like a 240 grit here nice sponge sanding stick I uh, got most of it away but you know a bit of Mr. Surfacer just to kind of get those final final uh, fine fine gaps uh, now we're just going to prime up our engine section and work on this we're going to use some 218 uh, these are buffable paints by the way 
this is aluminium uh, you want your air pressure a lot lower something like less than 10 psi on this one uh, once you've sprayed it down you kind of just buff it up and it just kind of makes it look really really cool admittedly aluminium doesn't kind of show up as good but it does still give you a bit of a cooler effect a bit more of a natural metal finish uh, using the side of the paintbrush again with some black just to paint some detailed areas in but what we're going to do here to actually um, put a wash on this we're going to use inks right inks are pretty damn good they last forever you just add some water really got to thin them down so so much and you can just slap this on all over um, and it's just going to sort of enhance and bring out all that detail now again coming back with some humble using their gray wash here we're just going to just put this uh, paint this on all the details use some enamel odorless finish just to actually again you just tidy up those areas um, where it is and you don't want it to be you just rehydrate and brush it off or even kind of blend some of those areas in if you want to go down that route and that just brings out the detail yet again now i'm just going to add some enamel thinners to an area where i want to where i want to add like engine stains and stuff um it just helps it flow a little bit better by using i mean i know this is fuel stains we're trying to do like an oil effect but um you can use um fuel stains and you can do a bit of a streaking with it as well now i'm going to come in with their engine oil now which is a lot darker and basically put that on top and it just gives it a nicer effect by have mixing the two colors together i'm even just splattering some off of um, a paintbrush and a cocktail stick just to give the engine cowl inside you don't really see in there but it was just a little bit extra a uh, bit of gappage now this gappage is just down to ejector pin marks marked in red just grind them off with a dremel and you'll see that the fit will be so so much nicer once you've grinded them off as you can see again at the Mac, uh, Tamiya masking tape again you know we're just um, masking up all our detailed areas this just kind of just limits the amount of destroying of recessed panel lines and all that sort of um, rescribing that we have to do um, the join is good on this no gaps but a bit of mr surfacer just kind of takes care of any sort of micro gaps that may be there just as a bit of a safety um, it is good to sand your models in a way where you have full accessibility right um, as you could see if you glued it all together and started sanding you just can't quite get to some of the corners so keep it as separate as much as you can and then we're just going to start sanding you know good sponge sanding sticks you know work your way down the grits until you know you've removed the seam line bit of black spray paint and we can see what kind of work we've done or what work needs to still be done um, you can sort of maybe see a little bit of a mark at the top there but if we just sand it away we'll be able to see if there is any more that needs to be done you might be able to see sanding scratches there hopefully as you can see but if you kind of just sand at it again you can like sand away those sanding scratches it's just a good visualization of what work still needs to be done I then just remove the masking tape and just give it a light sanding just to kind of feather things in. Uh, shouldn't really damage the surface with a bit of a light sanding. Now these RP tools are fantastic. They are expensive. But for things like this where we have like join lines still visible, if you get the right size, which 1.8 does the job here, and then hammer home um, um, some nice plastic card, we can get a perfectly sized circle that fits perfectly inside where our navigation lights are going to go and as you can see just a bit of tamiya extra thin cement and that just gets rid of those um, join lines that are inside there when it comes to scribing um, i do like to start off with the saw then come in with the pea cutter um, and hopefully you can see it's it's more rocking the model than moving the pea cutter right to get that stabilization and put in a nice straight line uh, we just have a rivet maker here where we're just very carefully going to re um, insert those rivets which hopefully you can just see a bit hard to see a bit small uh, now we come to the engine cowl where we're going to i'm just going to keep this part unglued 
Right, just so as we can have better access of doing stuff and you know we're just putting the elastic band on here just to lock it down uh, rolling up some sponge just so as we kind of lift the elastic band so as we don't get any Tamiya extrinsic cement underneath those elastic bands because they can leave some nasty marks um, if you get any get, get underneath that now we got the sponge we're just roughly cutting about the size doesn't have to be perfect because as you push it in it will expand and just you know if you just kind of just tap it in just precisely you can really get it to fit perfectly um, as you can see there then we come to resin you know we just need to lightly carefully cut this off um, it is quite fine on there so you know it does come off quite easily but you will have a bit at the bottom which we're just sawing off here i'm going to use this as like what touches the tarmac the bit that we're sawing a uh, little bit of trimming up of flash but then the part that was cut off we're just going to sand that down and as i say we make it a bit of a flat top and that's what's going to sit on the tarmac back with the good old micro crystal clear um, just to glue in our resin just here i'm just slapping it on we don't have to worry about being neat uh, place the hub cap on and you just remove the excess with a cotton wool bud as you can see it kind of fills in any gaps as well as you go along doing that uh, just carefully removing some um, pre-cut masking tape for our canopy just here which you know you just lay it down very carefully um, any sort of big areas which are left over by the masking tape use mask gel make sure it's nice and thick now you do get two canopies with this kit so I'm just using just lightly gluing that into place because it's a spare canopy we'll just use it as basically masking um, wipe up any sort of oozed out bit just there um, Plastic putty technique, apply and wipe with a cotton wool bud. Kind of gets rid of those sort of little gaps here and there really quickly because it's you, you wipe it away while it's wet. It's so quick to just, you know, get it all done and sorted. Um, now we're just going to sort of spray the black on there for the canopy just to kind of, that's what you're going to see inside. We're coming up to priming now as well. So, you know, a 50-50 mix of 1000 Mr. Surfacer. Um, with their thinners and then we just want to start off with a light misty coat just to kind of get the sticking process going we then can do about two maybe three coats of a normal coat where it kind of looks wet when it goes down but not kind of like dripping or pooling and, we should, and, and it really does make for a great great primer now we're going to enter into the pre uh, pre shading stage in the pre-saving stage, you know, we've, we're using a nice sort of mixture here of about 50-50. Bring down the air pressure maybe a little bit more than you would. And we're just um, following those recessed panel lines, right? It doesn't have to be super neat. You know, being a little bit unneat kind of adds the flavor of weathering, right? You're just trying to hold that biting point and just keep on moving. A uh, little bit of mottling just here for any sort of big flat areas just to give them a little bit of life. Uh, now, white is what we're supposed to do on the underside, but I'm going to use uh, like an off-white colour here. I think that was H21, which needed a bit of mixing, by the way. Uh, I'm using the off-white because we can't bleach white whiter. So if we have an off-white, we can then bleach it with white. Right, so a little bit different when you're dealing with undersides that are done white. So we're just kind of just spraying on a simple sort of base coat here. But you want to, after a couple of coats where you see that pre-shading is starting to disappear, is thin down your paints. Right? You thin down your paints, you make it more transparent. So it allows you to have more control um, when trying to not kill off all your uh, pre-shading. As you can see now, I'm actually doing that now. Um, it might take you more coats. You know, you might end up doing maybe three, four or five coats. Uh, but it's better that way, just so as I say, you get that control, right? Because one coat can kill everything off. Now we're going to do the bleaching with the H11. Uh, a bit hard to see on camera here, admittedly. But we're just 
um, inside the panel lines doing a bit of a mottling effect just to whiten things up and then I do go off and do the whole model just a light bristle of white just to kind of whiten everything up um, now the other two colors basically the same process but I am going to come in and do freehand with uh, our camo pattern that's on here because if you look at reference photos it's not a sharp edge it's more of a feathered sprayed edge so the key here is, is just coming in close um, getting your air pressure a bit lower paint a bit thinner uh, and just trying to get a straight line we're, we're going to need to mask up here right, i only mask up a bit um, if you're sort of intermediate or above um, if you may be basic you might want to mask the whole wing Right, and this is just to do our side colour here, which is H56. Right, and again, we're just getting in close and we're just kind of like colouring in the edges first. And then we sort of work our way down and fill in um, the rest. Hopefully, as you can see, just here. Um, as you sort of work your way down... You can sort of come a bit further away from the model and get your spray pattern getting a little bit bigger. And then I always like this bit where you remove the masking tape and you kind of see your work. I think that's quite cool. Uh, we're now going to thin this down and add a bit of white to then bleach our top colours as well. Just spraying through whatever's left in the um, nozzle end. Uh, I think you see, see a little bit more clearly the bleaching with this colour. You can just see how inside the panel lines you just kind of whiten that up a bit. Uh, same goes for our top main colour there as well. Some final pro shade and a quick touch here just kind of like going over those panel lines again with basically the same colour but you just kind of add a little bit of black to it just to darken it up and a lot more thinners just to kind of um, make it less, make it more transparent. And we can just finally finish it off with a gloss coat ready for the Declan stage and protects all our work and it just makes Declan go down a lot nicer and easier. And as you can see, really glossy that um, paint that we used there by Mr. Hobby. Uh, we have this nice sort of smiley face stroke, um, shark face going on here. Mr. Mark set out just to kind of get things down and going. Um, after a minute just kind of roll over it with a cotton wool bud to get out the air and get out the moisture. Mr. Mark Softer goes on top which we kind of just kind of keep applying that until it's conformed nicely to the model and stuck down. Now the, it was a little bit stubborn in some places I will admit so I did come in with the dreaded sort of oh you know uh, the Tamiax Fin Cement. Really got to be careful with this. Try not to kind of touch the surface more than once or twice or three times you know because you can really start smudging but it will get rid of any silvering or anything like that uh tamiax min fin cement is a last resort i like this it's a smiley face but then it's an angry face sorry that was my phone um yes you will have uh, maybe a bit of residue left over so it's a good idea to just um, wipe that up I uh, did have a bit of a mark here, so I did have to sort of like uh, come back in with the white and just touch that up. No big deal. Uh, you will see marks, right? Um, it, as long as you've cleaned it up, you know, as soon as you put a gloss coat on top of it, it just disappears. So if you ever see that, don't worry too much about it. And as you can see, that's all glossed up and ready for the weathering stage. Now we're going to use Mr. Uh, so Flurry Models weathering washes here, and we're coming in with the grey on top, right? Um, because it's dark on top, you want to go for a lighter colour. The landing gear, I'm going with black, um, and then the underside, I'm going with a dark grey. You just slap this all on. I do like to put two coats on after half an hour once it's dried, just to make sure we get it all in those recesses. Then we simply with a damp cloth, we just kind of wipe it all off. And what should happen is you'll remove what's on the surface, but leave behind what's in all the recesses. Right? And then as a final wipe, I kind of just go in the direction of flow. So if we miss anything, it's at least going to be a streaking effect. Cotton wool buds are good to get in those um, hard to reach places. But some XF4 now, uh, doing some chipping. Great sort of primer colour here. 
uh, just dabbing that down with a sponge you can use paint brushes as well to enhance that a bit more to do um, scratches I do come in with silver as well to go on top of that XF4 uh, and you can get some really cool chipping now we come in with the oil some blue buff um, which you know you just kind of just paint uh, just dab it on right this is where you want um, extra bleaching dusty dirty effects add a bit of blue which admittedly I keep kind of close to the the, um, end, um, the fuselage area uh, and with a dry big flat brush we just keep on brushing and brushing and brushing uh, and feathering and feathering it in and the more you brush at it the more it just gets blended and feathered in and knocked back and knocked back until you get it just the way you want it and you should get some nice uh, bleach extra bleach in there. I do like to go over the top of the fuselage as well uh, We could come with some brown oils as well Just targeting where the pilot and the crew are getting in and out the cockpit and again the same technique Keep brushing and brushing until you get it looking nice and dirty and dusty and feathered in a Bit of rubble now. We're going to add some pigments which admittedly pigments do once you put a gloss oh, Sorry a matte coat on top. They do tend to disappear However, I have found that if you put it on top of these oils, it seems to stick a bit better. And when you do put that matte coat on, we do seem to, it just does seem to stick around. Um, just doing our wheels just here, um, just dusting them off. Uh, and you should have a nice effect there as well. Now we're coming in with the Tamiya Masters weathering set. Um, we just use, I like to use cotton wool buds rather than what they provide. Masking the area off just to isolate um, a bit of weathering here. And we're kind of doing a bit of exhaust kind of weathering here. Um, as you can see, when you, you remove the masking tape, you get such a nice sharp edge, really indicating where it's coming from. A bit of black on top of that as well, which will just kind of like add a bit more flavor to it all. Um, a bit of a sludge wash where you just dollop it on and then you basically did deliberately try and make um, spidering effects with the airbrush just blowing these little beads across creates a cool little light effect then it's my favorite part we get to put the matte coat on which kind of just brings it all together brings all the weathering together makes it look you know a bit more like what it's going to look like when it's all done so I do like this stage Uh, I did forget to do some final post shading, so we're just getting like about 90% thinners to 10% paint here, really transparent as you can see. Um, and we're just going to do things like engine exhausts, a um, bit of subtle smoke off of the MGs, um, you know, kind of moving parts like flaps, just kind of enhancing them. Um, you can even sort of really kind of do post shading on all the panel lines, but like you could target like a little area and just kind of really make them really sort of darker um, just to kind of give it a bit more flavor, a little bit here and there. Popping off our canopy, uh, which should pop off easy because we only lightly glued that down and we can just remove all our canopy masks. And so there you have it. I do hope you have enjoyed the build of the Hellcat F6 F3 by Eddard in 148 scale. Um, if you want to go see some more videos, please go check out Genesis Models website. We have a massive archive of step by steps and just loads of knowledge on building models. Um, but as always, until next time, I will just leave you with our final reveals of this actual build. Uh, but again, as until next time, my name is Bobby Waldron, this is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.